Halloween, a harmless holiday or deadly deception? What is the history of this popular festival and how should Christians react to it? Stay tuned. Hi, this is Dustin with Hope Through Prophecy. The topic of Halloween can be quite controversial among Christians. We must go right to the Bible to see what God says about this yearly festival. First, if you're new, please subscribe and click the bell icon so that you're notified of all our future videos. Also, make sure to text BIBLE to 50597 for a free online Bible study course. Now let's get started. As autumn comes upon us, new emotions fill our hearts. It is a season of cooler, crisper air and beautiful fall colors. But as we approach the time of Halloween, some minds are filled with thoughts of ghosts and goblins and things that go boo in the nights. According to FactRetriever.com, Halloween is now the second highest grossing commercial holiday, second only to Christmas. But how should a Christian view Halloween? In this video, we will uncover the origins, major themes, and biblical perspective on Halloween. Make sure you stay to the end, where I will provide specific recommendations of how Christians should react to this famous holiday. I will now share some brief excerpts from History.com to uncover the history of Halloween. Where did the practice of trick-or-treating originate? The American Halloween tradition of trick-or-treating probably dates back to the early All Souls Day parades in England. During the festivities, poor citizens would beg for food and families would give them pastries called soul cakes in return for their promise to pray for the family's dead relatives. So where did the tradition of wearing a costume come from? On Halloween, when it was believed that ghosts came back to the earthly world, people thought that they would encounter ghosts if they left their homes. To avoid being recognized by these ghosts, people would wear masks when they left their homes after dark so that ghosts would mistake them for fellow spirits. What about the practice of giving away food or candy? On Halloween, hoping to keep supposed ghosts away from their houses, people would place bowls of food outside their homes to appease the ghosts and prevent them from attempting to enter. So how did this popular holiday first get started? Friends, while this holiday may seem harmless and fun, you will see that it has a dark past and dangerous meanings. Halloween's origins date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. This day marked the end of summer and the harvest and the beginning of the dark, cold winter, a time of year that was often associated with human death. Celts believe that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. On the night of October 31st, they celebrated Samhain, where it was believed that the ghosts of the dead returned to earth. Celts thought that the presence of otherworldly spirits made it easier for the Druids, or Celtic priests, to make predictions about the future. During the celebration, the Celts wore costumes, typically consisting of animal heads and skins. In 1000 AD, the Catholic Church would make November 2nd All Souls Day, a day to honor the dead. All Saints Day celebration, celebrated on November 1st, was also called All Hallows or All Hallow Mass, and the night before it, the traditional night of Samhain in the Celtic religion, began to be called All Hallows Eve and eventually Halloween. So that is the story of this popular holiday. We can see that Halloween has pagan origins and it was built on a teaching known as spiritualism. Spiritualism is the belief that when someone dies, their so-called spirit continues to live and can even communicate with the living. Not only was Halloween built on this belief of spiritualism, but it can be seen in the way that Halloween is celebrated even in today's modern culture. The ghosts, goblins, witches, and jack-o'-lanterns that are so popular in Halloween decor are all centered on the idea that the dead are not really dead. So what does the Bible say about this belief of spiritualism? According to the Bible, a soul, a human being, 
dies and does not have immortality. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. In fact, God alone has immortality. The King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality. The Bible is very specific as to when God will give this immortality to humans as a gift. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Notice that it says at the last trump we shall be given immortality. Yes, it will be at the second coming of Jesus, not before, not after, that those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior will be given eternal life. So, what about human beings who are dead right now? Well, since they have not been resurrected by Jesus yet, they are dead and in the grave. The Bible verifies this and is crystal clear that the dead know nothing and have no part or involvement in our lives. Consider this straightforward Bible verse. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Their love and their hate and their envy have already perished, and forever they have no more share in all that is done under the sun. Contrary to the teachings of Halloween, which celebrates the supposed living spirits of the dead, the Bible says that the dead have perished and have no consciousness of human events. In fact, the Bible repeatedly refers to death as a sleep. In one of these examples, Job tells us, So man lieth down, and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. So, what is really happening when we hear of supernatural phenomena such as the appearing of ghosts and seances when people claim to speak to the dead? We can be sure that these occurrences do not involve communication with the deceased. According to the Bible, it is impossible to communicate with the dead. Now friends, I want to be clear. I am not saying that spirits don't exist. What I am saying is that these spirits are not your deceased loved ones. The Bible clarifies who these spirits really are, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles. While the context of this verse refers to specific end time events, it does show that devils or demons have the ability to work miracles. The devil and his demons do have the power to impersonate others. Consider this verse, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So we can see that Satan and his ministers, demons, have the ability to appear as someone else. This is where we get the term familiar spirits. These are evil spirits who have carefully observed human beings and have learned how to impersonate them with great precision. When a person is deceived into communicating with these demons or familiar spirits, this person has now opened themselves up to being deceived by Satan himself. God hates when his people attempt to speak to the dead, because he knows how dangerous this is. Notice the strong words that God uses in Leviticus 20:27. 20, a man also or woman that has a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, their blood shall be upon them. While this punishment was for a specific time and place, it does show that God hates the teaching that the dead are still living. We can see that Halloween, with its ghosts, witches, and celebration of the dead, promotes spiritualism and goes directly against this plain Bible teaching that the dead know nothing. It echoes that first lie told by Satan in the Garden of Eden, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So, should Christians celebrate Halloween? I hope you have arrived at your own conclusion by now. 
I hope you have seen that the Bible clearly forbids any association with spiritualism or the idea that human beings are immortal. The Bible tells us, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Some might say, but it's popular to celebrate Halloween. I may be looked at as strange if I don't let my children participate. As Christians, we are called to be separate from the world. The Bible says, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. We are also told that truth will not always be popular. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Some might say, well, I don't believe in spiritualism. I'm just going to participate in Halloween for fun and socializing. But friends, there's a problem with this. Halloween is so interwoven with evil teachings and practices that we should avoid any association with it. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 tells us to abstain from all appearance of evil. So what is the conclusion? Friends, stay away from Halloween. It is a holiday dedicated to the devil and the false teaching of spiritualism, the teaching that the dead continue to live on after they die. It has no place in the life of a Christian. Instead, choose a wholesome activity to do on that night. You may choose to greet trick-or-treaters at the door with a warm smile and Christian literature, and maybe some healthy snacks. You can pray for the safety and spiritual well-being of all those who are participating in this holiday. This may be a great night to have a special family event where you choose an activity that focuses on the goodness of God rather than the darkness of the devil. The principle that we should always follow as Christians is, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Jesus is coming soon. He tells us, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to every man according as his work shall be. Let us separate ourselves from anything that would stop us from being prepared to meet him. If we are faithful, we will be given immortal bodies at the second coming of Jesus. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Friends, let us prepare for that day. Please make sure you are subscribed to Hope Through Prophecy and hit the bell icon so you can continue to receive solid biblical teaching and encouragement. Stay close to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith.